everyone today on TNJ Adventures I'm going to show you how to replace the passenger side ball joint on the Subaru Justy 4 2009 model months ago I replaced the driver's side ball joint and now I have to replace the passenger side one. To replace the ball joint you have to replace the whole control arm. You can just unbolt the ball joint and then replace that. This is the control arm that I got. You can see that it comes together with the ball joint. First we have to jack up the car and then I'm going to start with the ball joint nut to see if that comes loose and then with the stabilizer bar and if those two come loose I can go forward to unbolting the arm. The car is in gear right now. First whenever I'm jacking the car up um, I start by loosening the nuts or the bolts, it depends what you have. Subarus have nuts, uh, this one has nuts also. Then. I check up the car and then take the wheel completely off. Although I've also checked while the car was lifted, um, I'm going to show you how visible it is that the ball joint is, is bad. So we can take whatever tool you want to pry with and put it underneath the ball joint well in between the ball joint and the control arm and when you press you will see how the components move relative one to each other I don't have this nut taken off and everything is put together so nothing is taken off so you can see how the ball joint has play inside its own housing. So first we need to see if this pin, safety pin comes off. So I'm just straightening the pin so that I can pull it out. in the greaser on the bolts that I have to take out. So this ball joint nut is a 17 millimeter but it's a bit rusted so it doesn't really want to So after a few tries, where I tried to just rotate the nut, I wasn't able to do that. So I started pounding on this crown of the nut. You can see that the nut has this crown for the pin, the safety pin to go through. So I started pounding with a hammer in this so that it would loosen it up. And finally, um, after that I tried again with the wrench and an extension like this to put on the wrench so that I have more grip and it came out then one other issue that you have is without the proper removal tool for the ball joint itself um, I tried to pry like this it didn't work but then I noticed that this one is a bit 
tapered so I put it inside here and started hammer hammering on it and that made it come loose. Okay, so right now I took all the bolts and nuts off. I just need to take this last nut off and I'm hoping it will come out. One disadvantage of doing this while the car is jacked up only on one side is that the stabilizer bar is always going to press on this side. As you can see right now, it's kind of hard to move. So I'm not I'm trying not to damage the threads right here. here do some play also this bush doesn't look too good I see it's cracked here So you'll see that there's this cover on the ball joint, you have to take that off. So I'll take the nut off. And it's really weird that I think they changed to an 18mm knot. Okay, this is the cover, it's a plastic cover. Now begins the hard part of putting everything back together.
so yeah, right now I'm struggling to position everything back together. This thing, because the other wheel is pushing, the stabilizer bar is pushing also, so it's pushing upwards, and I need it to be pushed downwards. But I'm not gonna lift the other side also. I'm gonna try to do it like this. Once you put all the bolts in, it should be easier. tightening the bolts and just putting them back together yeah, you see the stabilizer ring also popped back Hopefully the threads didn't get damaged. important thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to make sure that this side of the ball joint is not pinched and of course you should tighten this one at the proper torque it's important to torque these bolts um, while the car is lifted like this like you're lifting the control arm because in this way it simulates the riding height so when you tighten on the bushes well this one is not so important because uh, you tighten the, the bolt is vertical so you're not really tensioning the, the bush but on this one on the front one it's important because while it's rotating if you let the control arm go all the way down and you tighten the bolt then when the arm comes back to the riding height it's gonna contortion the bush I'm gonna start with the front bolt. The front one is 100 newton meters plus minus 18. So I'm gonna set my torque range. So 100 plus minus 18. So I'm gonna put it on 112 so that we're inside the tolerance. Now the rear one is 80 plus minus 16, so 84 should be okay. Now this rear bolt is always annoying because if you don't tighten in a lot, you have a lot of wrenching to do on it until it gets, it gets to proper Now the stabilizer and link is 40.2 plus minus 8. And on 
this one, of course, you might need to put some back pressure on it. If it turns around, but it seems like right now it's not. It has been, it's tightened, but I somehow don't believe this. I will double check it later. This ball joint nut has to be tightened at 51.5 plus minus 7.4 newton meters. But as I told you, I don't have a torque wrench that I can tighten with like that. So I just tighten it by hand. I guess double checking it confirms that it's tight. So I'll double check the other ones too. So go back to 80. And of course after I'll take the drive, I will triple check it. Okay. And 100. So after you've tightened everything, you have to make sure that you press in the new safety pin. This control arm came with a new one. They all should come with a new one. You should never replace. Uh, you should never use old safety pins. So I align the nut so that the hole is visible. see the hole is visible right there so right now we have to put the safety pin through and then um, and then we have to bend these two sides so that it wraps around Here it should easily go through, but sometimes a little bit of tapping can help. Okay. This is a really big safety pin. It wraps all around almost, but that's not an issue. It's actually pretty good. So right now we're gonna take the drive. And we'll see if everything is okay. So I've come back to check and it seems that this one, the rear one, is a bit untight. I 
already checked the front one and it's okay but it seems the rear one was a bit loose so that's why you have to check and retighten after you drive the car because sometimes the parts will align and then you want to make sure everything is tight okay guys so that's all i wanted to show you today i hope you enjoyed this video too and maybe if you have this kind of super justy you can write to me i'm always glad to help other people with the same cars as me also if you have a forester you can write to me but until the next time i wish you all the best and feel free to like subscribe and share <laughs>